Today we are going to go over the installation and training of the T3 Extreme welding machine. When setting up your T3, you're going to want to start in the back of the machine. We have our air regulator, our main power breaker, power cord, and then also our foot pedal. When setting up your air regulator, you want to make sure that you have a female and male fitting for a quick disconnect. Once installing those items, and you want your air regulator to be set around 80 PSI. Now we are going to hook up the foot pedal. You'll notice on the plug there's a bunch of little grooves on it. We'll go for the thickest groove and that will always be facing up. The plug will only insert one way. Once you find that, we will spin it and lock it in position. After having the machine set, you are ready to turn on the main power breaker. Just give this a switch and power is running through. After flipping the power switch, you must come around to the front and hit the reset button. After hitting the reset button, you'll see the temperature controller light up and show your settings. So this is your temperature controller. We're going to avoid hitting these three buttons. That's what we would use to program the temperature controller itself. We're going to stick with the up and down arrows. This will take up the lower number. That is our set point. And then after we're releasing, you're going to see the red number climb to the green. Once it is set at your desired temperature, you're ready to weld. Before we turn up the temperature all the way, we're going to go over a few of the other switches on the panel. We have our speed. It is from 1 to 10. Um, we're going to go roughly 10 meters per minute. And right beside the speed, we have our time delay. What this is going to do is cause a little delay to give our wedge time to swing in between the weld rollers to start the welding process. And right beside our delay setting, we have our air regulator. We want to start off with this set around 20 PSI, but this is relative to the fabric you are welding together. Then you can see we have our emergency stop. Um, at any time you feel uncomfortable, just give that a whack and it's going to cut the power to the machine. It's going to completely shut down. When ready to start back up, we're going to give this a little turn. It's going to pop out. Then we're going to hit the reset again. Screen pops on. We're ready to set it back up. To demonstrate the delay setting, I'm going to put it at setting zero. When we swing in, it's already spinning right before the wedge makes it in. If we put it up to four, it's going to give that wedge too much time. Now you can see it starts spinning. Um, that's going to put a big hole in an 18 ounce banner. Once again, this is another setting relative to the material. To demonstrate our delay setting, I have it set at zero. And you're going to notice before the wedge makes it in, the wheels are going to start spitting. That's going to leave probably about an inch of unwelded material at the beginning of your seam. Now if we go up to four and we swing it in, you can see the wedge is sitting. Now it's going. It's going to sit for roughly four seconds before the wheels will start pulling your material through. With lighter weight materials, this is going to cause the wedge to burn through the start of your banner. So now we are going to go over the last three buttons on the machine. We have our up and down for the weld roller pressure. As you can see, the pressure regulates when you go up and down. We also have a start and stop button. This is if you don't want to use the foot pedal. You can align your material, click play, have the wedge swing in, and once you're done, hit stop. Now we are going to set the speed for in which the weld rollers go up and down. There's these two little knobs right here. If you spin them all the way in, you can see how it barely makes it up, and it's very, very slow. And if we want it to go faster, we just need to spin these out. How you have this set is up to your operator, whether you want it to go up and down slower or faster. Now we are going to go over the most important thing of operating your welding machine, wedge alignment. When aligning your wedge, you have three knobs. You have your in and out knob, which is going to move your wedge tip closer or further away from the weld rollers. We have our up and down and our left to right. 
So easiest way to remember, when you grab the handle, you are pointing to the direction the knob is going to be taking that wedge tip. When you start to adjust, you only want to adjust one adjustment at a time. When you adjust your in and out, we are going to loosen these two bolts. You can see the slot collars here, which is going to help it slide in and out. On the up and down, we have these two knobs that we're going to loosen to allow you to adjust it. And for the left and right, we must take off this cover to expose the other bolt that we're going to loosen. When you are aligning your wedge, you want to make sure you have a little bit of play on your wedge tip. This helps if you're a little bit off in your adjustment, it's going to work its way in between the weld rollers. Now we are going to see how this machine is currently set. We swing the wedge in and you can see it is not making contact with the upper or lower weld roller. This will result in no weld. So we are going to adjust it and bring that in closer so it's equally touching the upper and lower weld roller. So I like to start off with my left and right adjustment. I want my wedge completely off my wheels. I swing my wedge in and you notice it's not covering the whole one inch wheel. I have to make an adjustment to the right. I'm going to start off by loosening these two bolts. After loosening, I'm going to adjust it by using this knob, pushing it to the right. After I get somewhere close, I'm going to snug down those bolts, swing it in, and that's looking nice and flush. I'm going to then lock these down fully. You want to make sure you double check after securing everything for it could twist or move out of adjustment a little bit. But after locking it down, we're nice and flush right up against those wheels. After adjusting the left and right and getting the wedge flush with the weld rollers, I move on to the up and down adjustment. If you swing your wedge in, you can see it is making contact fully with the bottom wheel and nothing with the top. That is not proper adjustment. We are going to need to adjust it up. So I'm going to loosen my two up and down bolts and then I'm just going to slowly walk this up. See how high we are now? So that is going to be too high. Since we have some play in this wedge, I like to cheat it a little bit closer to the bottom before locking it in. This way we can hit the bottom and then roll up into the top wheel. After landing somewhere in the middle there, you can lock it down. And once again, after locking those bolts, I like to swing it in one more time to make sure we're sitting in the middle. We also have our tilt adjustment. What I mean by the tilt is how our wedge goes in. So as you can see, we have these two knobs. If you loosen one and screw up the other, it will start leveling out that wedge. You just want to make sure our wedge is going right into those wheels and it's nice and level with the bottom roller. Now we are ready for our final adjustment and that is bringing this wedge tip in to making contact with the upper and lower weld roller. I'm going to loosen my two adjustment bolts and when it's swung in, I'm going to walk it in. As I'm walking in, I'm taking my wrench and just making sure I'm making equal contact. Once you swing it in, you want to make sure you have full contact with your bottom and upper weld roller and then lock down your adjustment knobs. After you have proper alignment, we can now turn up the temperature. If you hold down the top arrow, you'll see it eventually starts jumping. I'm going to start at 370. That is just a guess number where most materials end up working on a T3. Now that the temperature is stabilized at the set point, I'm going to turn my speed up to 10, my delay to 2, and I'm going to keep my weld roller pressure at 20 PSI. Now that the machine is set up, I'm going to take two scraps of material. I'm going to place them between the weld rollers, pinch them down, and then I'm going to swing that wedge in and check the weld. And you can see full one inch of the coating coming off. That is what you want every time. If you are not getting this look on your finished product, your wedge is probably not in enough. So you will have to readjust your wedge, moving it closer, applying more pressure against the weld rollers. 
if you are getting too much of a weld, you might start seeing some wrinkles and it will be hard for the operator to control the material. You might want to back that wedge out a little bit.